Good afternoon. As we celebrate the third Sunday of Lent, let's stand and join in singing our gathering song, number 638, We Gather Together. Number 638. Sunday of Lent to prepare ourselves for that great Paschal Feast. And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. I'm pleased to have Deacon Fortin uh, with us today and be here every so often uh, between now and April um, uh, to, be, uh, to homilize uh, and to experience the faith community here at St. Teresa. Make ourselves ready. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting light. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who is fasting, who passing prayer and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their midst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more, and they will stone me. 
the Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock in Horeb. Strike the rock, and the water will flow from it for people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massa and Meribah because of the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come into his presence giving thanks. Let us hail him with a song of praise. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Oh, come, let us bow and bend low. Let us kneel before the God who made us. For he is our God, and we the people who belong to his pasture, the flock that is led by his hand. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice, Harden not your hearts as at Meribah, as on that day of Massa in the desert, when your forebears put me to the test, when they tried me, though they saw my work. St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person what one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. Praise to you, Lord Jesus, King of endless glory, Savior of the world, Savior of the world. 
Savior of the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. To you, O Lord. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone into the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her and said, If you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself, with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying, I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand, because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, Could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say, in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life so that the sower and reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me everything I have done. 
When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved brothers and sisters, there's going to be an exorcism in this parish this weekend. That's right, Father Cecil is going to pray a prayer of exorcism, a prayer of deliverance over people here in this very church. But this is not going to be a major exorcism, not one of those exorcisms over people who are deeply possessed by evil spirits. It's it's what's called a minor exorcism. And the church prays this prayer every Lent over what's called the catechumens, those preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation at the Easter Vigil. And so tomorrow, Father's going to pray this minor exorcism. It affords the catechumens spiritual protection, and it helps them, helps them withdraw from the influence of the devil, which is very real. And we see that in our world. And it helps them then also prepare for the sacraments they're going to receive. And the truth is that we all need spiritual protection. Even though we're already in the church, we're already Catholic, we all need preparation for receiving the sacraments. So we, every member of the church, during this time of Lent, we go through a sort of preparation for Easter just like the catechumens. Only we do this differently, in a sense. Since we're already members of the church, we, we do this through the participation, the full participation in the sacraments. And then also by acts of penance and by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, as we hear every Lent. And this impetus that we have to do penance is really for us to accompany these people who are preparing to enter the church, surely. But then also for our own spiritual growth, for our own readiness to receive the sacraments every time we come to Mass or receive any of the other sacraments. Jesus says in in Luke 13, unless you all do penance, you shall all perish. And so it's for our own salvation and our own good as well. But if the catechumens, these people who aren't yet fully members of the church, are going to receive this special prayer to protect them from the evil one, to protect them from Satan, and to help them prepare for reception of the sacraments, shouldn't we, the members of the church, who belong to the church probably all our lives, or a good portion of our lives, shouldn't we receive a special blessing? Shouldn't we receive some kind of help from the church, a prayer over us to prepare for the sacraments, to, as it were, be freed from the influence of the devil? Yes. Yes, of course. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, as it says in the Eucharistic prayer, to to seek out these blessings to make sure that we are prepared. And the ordinary way for those who have been baptized and are entered into the life of the church to receive this protection from Satan and the evil, evil one is through confession. The sacrament of confession is far more powerful than the exorcism prayer that's going to be prayed over the catechumens tomorrow. The sacrament of confession has the power of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection. And it communicates the power of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection to us every time we go. It delivers us from the power of the evil one, whose influence we come under every time we sin. 
Once you have been baptized, the church teaches us the ordinary means for your spiritual protection and your growth is the sacrament of confession. This sacrament forgives our sins. It reconciles us to the church. It renews our baptism and bestows grace to fight evil and to grow in virtue. Again, more powerful than any exorcism. This whole dynamic of preparation and confession and deliverance from evil, it plays itself out all throughout the gospel. And through this very long gospel that was just read, we heard that playing out. First, Jesus, when he speaks to this woman, he lets her know her dignity as one who is called to receive the living water and even intrigues her interest. This Samaritan woman who, as the reading tells us, would have nothing usually to do with a Jewish person. She is one who is capable of receiving the same graces that that Jesus' fellow Jewish people and then ultimately all the members of, of the church that Jesus is founding, the one that we belong to today, are meant to receive. But what is this living water that Jesus promises? What is this great grace that Jesus is holding out that will make this woman never thirst again? Well, Jesus, a little bit later in John 7, he explains what the living waters are. He stands up in the temple, and this is what he says. If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart shall flow rivers of living water. And then John goes on to comment. Now this he said about the spirit, which those who believed in him were to receive. So, this Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, that He is the living waters. And He is the one who we receive in the sacraments. Verse 38 of that same chapter goes on to say, The Spirit is given when Jesus is glorified. Which in John's Gospel, the glorification of Jesus happens at His crucifixion. It's when He is in fact lifted up, as He says. So, this is your dignity. The fact that you participate in Jesus' glorification, His glory becomes your own. And what is His glory? His crucifixion. His death. He died for you. He died for each one of you to save you from the power of the evil one. And then also, not just to save you and deliver you, but to exalt you and glorify you, that the Holy Spirit, the living water, would be poured into your heart. And so we hear in our second reading from Romans 5, it says, the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Paul goes on to say, and this is so true, right? We know this. Like, we have trouble with the people next to us who are good people. And Paul points this out. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person. Though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And so, in the second part of this gospel, Jesus goes on to elicit a confession from this woman because in order for her to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit, the living waters, she has to be free from the power of the evil one, from the influence of the evil one. And that comes via confession. And so he says to her, And if only it were this easy, you could walk in the confessional and the priest would just say, okay, so these are your sins, right? And then you could say, yeah, yeah, that's what I did. But that's what Jesus does here. He says to her in John 4, you have five husbands, and the one you are with now is not your husband. And her words affirm this truth when she says, I see that you are a prophet. In other words, she's saying to Jesus, I see that you know something that only God could have revealed to you. Throughout John 4, there are all these allusions to Jesus' crucifixion. There's the mention of the sixth hour, the mention of his own thirst. He says to this woman that he's thirsty. These very things will happen when he's on Calvary to indicate 
that he died for this woman too, for the forgiveness of her sins, as he died for us, for the forgiveness of our sins. But it requires that confession, that admission of our guilt, and then he'll take it away. And he does this, God does this all throughout Scripture. Jesus does this all throughout his ministry in the Gospels. It happens in um, Genesis, the very opening uh, book of the Bible in chapter 3, or chapter 4, when Cain kills his brother Abel. The Lord has this exchange. He says, where's your brother, basically? In other words, he gives Cain an opportunity to fess up to what he did. And Cain sort of tries to avoid it instead of just admitting his guilt. And there's further punishment for that for Cain. And it's not that God wants to punish us, just like it's not that parents want to punish their kids, but it's ultimately for our good. It's ultimately to exalt us, to glorify us, to free us from the influence of the devil. In conclusion, I would just... I would just plead with you, please take this Lent, take this opportunity to avail yourself of the grace of confession, to avail yourself of the freedom that comes in confessing your sins to a priest who will then pray the prayer that is far more powerful than any exorcism when he says, I absolve you from your sins. John Paul II said, happiness is being rooted in love. And since the Holy Spirit, who is love, as we heard in the second reading, is poured out into our hearts, the only thing that stands between us and the fullness of happiness is sin. That's it. So, not even just this Lent, but frequently, as much as you encounter sin in your own life, I, I encourage you, I ask you, I beg you, please avail yourself of the grace of confession. Jesus died for us. What are we going to do for him? May the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May we profess our faith with the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the, the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scripture. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the light of the world to come. Amen. This time of Lent, 
Incidentally, I did not know I was losing my voice, so you have to put up with it a little. But in this time of Lent, we are intent more than ever uh, to be aware of the needs of our sisters and brothers, those of Ukraine, uh, those spiritually uh, searching uh, for catechumens and candidates, uh, just for all of God's people. We offer these intercessions. For the church, may God's love and mercy be abundant upon her. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the violence in Ukraine, may God's peace and a spirit of reconciliation prevail. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of our military, police, and firefighters, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect and candidates seeking to join the Catholic community of faith, that trusting in the truth of Christ, they may find freedom of mind and heart and preserve it always. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they find peace and eternal rest in the presence of God in heaven. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for Charlotte Gerstner, on her anniversary remembrance, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O gracious, merciful, compassionate God, we gather here in these days of penitence, searching for deeper relationship with you and with one another. Free us from darkness, Bring us into the light of your face. Quench us with the water of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Number 478, Return to God. Number 478. Turn to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Now the time of grace has come, the day of salvation. Come and learn now the way of our God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Return to God with all your heart, the source of grace and mercy. Come seek the tender faithfulness of God. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm using today the um, 
Eucharistic prayer for reconciliation, the preface for this Sunday. Uh, it's the whole spirit of Lent. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty, it's our salvation. We always, everywhere, give you thanks, Lord, or a Father, almighty and eternal God. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her. And so ardently did he thirst for her faith that he kindled in her the fire of divine love. And so we too give you thanks and with angels praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings. Pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with greater love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, but did not disdain to be nailed for our sake on the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched, between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant. He desired to celebrate the Paschal feast, the Paschal mystery in the presence of his disciples. And as he ate with them, he took bread and giving thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you who are faithful and a merciful God, 
this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit as they partake of the one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart together with Francis, our Pope, with Dennis and Joseph, our bishops. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and who were the deceased brothers and sisters whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, free at last from the wound of corruption, made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him, with him, and him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you, my peace I give you Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be you.
Number 482, the cross of Jesus. Number 482. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. <clears throat> As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from heaven, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The topic for this Thursday's RCAA class is morality, the commandments, examination of conscience. All are welcome to attend. The youth group flower sale forms are now available at the church doors and online. And the April Lecture and Eucharistic Ministers schedule is available here at the side table. And the Lord be with you. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Director Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful and in your kindness grant your servants this grace that abiding in the love of you and of their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Number 742, the Church is One Foundation. Number 742. <laughs>
but I'm pretty sure I saw the church, a good church. Do it. You can do it, but. Thank <laughs> you. 